what is up everybody uh, so I'm doing an update on the 65 gallon aquascape in the rimless tank uh, starters I moved two pieces of the branch wood uh, this piece used to be around right there uh, I decided to kind of join it with those two pieces uh, that piece moved a little bit to insignificantly but still moved a little uh, so before we get to the plants, first I want to talk about uh, the livestock that's still in here. I'm not sure where he went. Oh, there he is. But uh, right now I've just got this guppy in here. Uh, for fish-wise, uh, it's just him in here. Uh, he's one of the guppies that I bred um, a while ago. Uh, he's just been a dither fish for my cockatoides, uh, my cribensis, but. Uh, I decided to take one of them, put them in here, uh, just to make sure I don't make any uh, dumb mistakes. And if I do, I can tell what happens. Uh, so basically, he's my test dummy. Uh, while I'm getting this tank started, trying to find the right levels of uh, CO2 and pH and KH and everything like that. Uh, the only other uh, animals that are in here with him are Malaysian trumpet snails and some other snail that how to ride on one of the plants. Uh, I'm not too worried about them considering I plan on wiping out the entire snail population later anyway. Uh, but basically, uh, they're one of those really, really invasive snails. Here, I think this is one of them. I have no idea what they're called, but uh, they're possibly the most annoying snail ever. Uh, unless you're doing like a breeding tank or something where they can clean up after the, after the fish and eat all the algae it's completely unnecessary to have them uh, they breed like crazy and they leave egg sacs everywhere it's just really annoying um, aside from these guys in here I have the Malaysian trumpet snails like I said there's one right now it's a uh, adolescent one uh, basically, these guys tunnel underneath uh, the substrate and help uh, aerate it so I don't get anything uh, bad growing down there that can harm the uh, tank, release anything. Um, not a lot of them are out right now. They're nocturnal. Uh, they only come out during the night. So I don't usually see them that often unless it's really a problem. Like it's too much CO2 and they all run to the surface during grass from air. And then I know there's too much CO2. Uh, right now, that's that one over there that I just showed you is the only one I'm seeing. Uh, the rest are all underneath the sand and uh, the aqua soil. One of these episodes, I'll uh, I'll get I'll get uh, my hand wet and uh, show you how many there are in here because they're live bearers first of all, so there's no more egg sacs, and second of all, they still breed like crazy. Uh, there's another one. Who's in my I still breed like crazy. So all I have to do is put my hand near the sand, swoosh it around, and uh, within a one and a half inch radius, I'm going to find at least two of these guys. Uh, which is good, considering any food that doesn't get eaten and somehow gets underneath the sand or the aqua soil, they'll eat it and they'll find it. Uh, any like air bubbles that are trapped under there, they'll pop them up. Uh, so, a really, really useful uh, uh, invasive species. They're possibly the only snail that I will ever actually want in my tank. Uh, there's another one down on that, back on that leaf. But uh, that's it for livestock. So now I can move on to the main animal, main livestock of the show. Uh, plants. So basically, what I've got in here now, I uh, just added, added, added some, uh, some new uh, plants in this tank uh, from a while ago. I've got uh, Liliposis brisinzalis. I still think I'm saying that wrong. Uh, that's been growing a little bit faster uh, than they usually do in most tanks. Uh, since I got it maybe a week ago, it's already sent out a lot of shoots. Granted, I did get six pot of, pots of it and uh, let's put them really close together so it wouldn't, won't take that long for them to make a nice little lawn. Uh, secondly, in the foreground I have 
Hydrocaudal Triparta variation Japan, uh, which obviously is a variation, uh, a Japanese variation of Hydrocaudal Triparta, and it is incredibly fast of a grower. Like the first week, it barely grew at all. After that, it just exploded. Like, uh, let me find a good example. If you can see that stem right there. Uh, that was just one plant about three days ago. Uh, I came downstairs and I d it just appeared practically. Uh, so it's going to fill in that space very, very rapidly now. Uh, the only unfortunate thing about that is it's hard to control if you want to control it. Uh, honestly, I don't want to control it going down that way, like going towards uh, where the thermometer is. Uh, I want it to be as wild as possible that way. Uh, however, it is a pretty uh, randomized plant uh, in which, uh, regards of how it grows. So I've got some stems that are back here and they're growing the wrong way. Uh, so i got to get in there and trim it next time I do a water change. Uh, I've got one of them back there in the cryptocrines, which I'll talk about in a second. Uh, basically, this is just an amazing, fast-growing plant. Uh, granted, I do have four high-output uh, T5 uh, halogen lights on this thing, plus CO2 and aqua soil. So uh, I guess kind of expected to grow fast, just like the uh, microsword. But let's move on to the uh, stem plants. So stem plants in here, I have. Bob Camonery still, uh, Ludwigia SP Rare Red, uh, which I got off of eBay. I'm not sure if I put the link in the uh, description of the last video, but uh, I have some uh, that I might start selling on eBay too, uh, some immersed versions of this, and honestly, I am, it is definitely worth whatever price you can really find on this thing, other than like above 20, per, uh, 20 bucks for like five stems maybe, but uh, like, if you can tell from this camera, uh, the uh, the leaves are all kind of ruffled. Let's see if I can get a better shot over here. All the leaves are kind of ruffled, uh, and very, very, very nice, uh, dark, heavy red. And uh, it's a really fast grower too. Uh, so basic, basically, with all Ludwigias, but this is just the best Ludwigia I've ever had. Uh, to its left. It's the same exact species, but uh, these are some trimmings of an uh, immersed uh, version of it that I just put in a couple days ago. So they've gotten used to water, but they still haven't changed their uh, leaf color yet, so I'm waiting for that. And directly to their left, I have some, I think, I'm like 70% is some uh, type of Ludwigia. I got four stems of it for free. Uh, when I ordered those uh, those guys, uh, they didn't give me a name when they sent it, uh, but I, th I don't know why, but Ludwigia Prenensis just comes to mind when I look at it. Uh, maybe completely wrong, but uh, after I start growing it a lot, and maybe I get a scientific name for it, uh, I might start selling it when I sell those guys, just because it's a, it's a really, really neat plant. It's practically the same, both immersed and submerged, but... Uh, so I got a nice uh, little spiral pattern for the leaves. Uh, I've got three stems of it back there, and the only one you can see is the really, really big one. Uh, and now let's move on to the cryptocrines. So this is cryptocrine uh, Wenty bronze. Uh, so basically it's all just one species of plant, and it's a whole bunch of it. I had 13 pots? No, not 13. 14 or 16 pots of it. Uh, I got four of them for free uh, because it was a special deal going on at AquariumPlants.com. Uh, so I didn't even realize there was a deal going on. I just came with more and I realized what was happening. But uh, planted them all in the same vicinity back there just to give that uh, that type that part of the tank a little bit more height since I didn't have enough uh, chiparta at the time to fill it in and. Uh, it's grown in quite nicely. Uh, another reason for the uh, trumpet snails is that 
all the uh, leaves, since uh, most plants are grown immersed in farmery, farmers, farms and stuff, uh, nurseries, plant nurseries, all the leaves that are immersed start to decay. Let's see if I can find an example. Uh, this is not that great of an example, but you can tell on the edge of that leaf, it's getting yellow, uh, it's starting to fray away. So I had a lot more of those the first time I put these uh, these guys in. So as they we, they uh, were decaying into the water, the uh, trumpet snails were just munching away at that, which helped the population boom too. Uh, so all the green leaves, uh, you can see, all mostly immersed leaves. And then if I can just zoom in on this, there is right in the center of the camera, there is a, uh, an example of one of the submerged leaves. Another one, you see yeah, where it gets its bronze named. Uh, it's got a nice little hammered look to it. Uh, so I can't wait till that starts to fill in a little bit more. So I've got it all on that side of the driftwood and a little bit on the edge right there. Uh, and I think I'll save the swords for last since they're my favorite plant in here. Uh, going to my floating plants in here. Let's turn down the light so you guys can focus on this. Uh, this is uh, I completely it's, uh, skipping my mind on the scientific name, but basically it's water lettuce. Uh, it's it's the normal variety of water lettuce. However, for some reason, in all of my tanks, whenever it grows, it just grows as a dwarf form. Uh, maybe I'm not given enough time to get big, but I don't know. This is what this is all I get. Maybe about a three inches, four inches across. You can see that. But uh, the main reason I put them in this tank is for that root structure. If you know what roots on regular plants look like, you can tell that these roots are insane. And they're only going to get bigger. Uh, so basically, in the first uh, week, month, uh, month and a half or so, you want to have floating plants in their tank. Not, uh, not a floating plant like duckweed or a frog bit. You're never going to get those out of your tank. But something like... Uh, dwarf water lettuce, regular water lettuce. Um, I can't think of any other floating plants that are really in the tank. Uh, I guess you could put in some uh, stem stem plants and use them as floating plants. Uh, they work practically the same. But uh, with all the nutrients that are released and uh, the plants in the soil that aren't really uh, getting the amount of CO2 and the nutrients and the light that they uh, that they really need to start off or Maybe it's not enough for them to con concentrate for uh, the amount of nutrients yet. So you've got a bunch of nutrients in your water, not enough plants to take up all the nutrients. What are you going to get? You're going to get algae. And uh, I've already got a tiny bit of an algae problem in this tank. Well, this tiny bit of an algae problem. Uh, but luckily, uh, all of it was fought back a little bit by these uh, the water lettuce plants which grow incredibly fast too. They send out a new plant like every day. Uh, and a little bit of cleaning, the algae's gone. And right after uh, I take out the algae, then I get this boom in plant life. Everything starts growing like twice as fast. Uh, so obviously it was competing with the algae. And as soon as I eliminated the threat, it's gone. Uh, now I probably won't get any algae. Except for a little bit of an uh, orange spot algae on the glass, that's easily taken care of uh, during water changes. And the last but not least, my favorite plant, plant, <laughs> plant, uh, plant in this tank, Echinodorus atlinsberg. Uh, this is a German variation of uh, Echinodorus red flame, which I'm pretty sure was a German variation of Echinodorus ozelot. Uh, so this is like third generation mutation uh, in this plant bloodline. But uh, it is a really, really nice plant. Uh, for whatever reason, both immersed and submerged, the, pl the uh, plant doesn't get that tall. Like uh, Echinodorus, uh, what is that called? It's uh, mistakenly blurry, but they just renamed it. Whatever, I'll put it in the description. Uh, but 
whatever that the uh, common Amazon sword is. This doesn't get nearly as tall, but honestly, totally worth it. The leaves look a hundred times better. They're not as red as a uh, red flame is, but it's just enough red to give it a nice accent. Uh, also, it gets stays really short, like I just said. So I was expecting the swords to get to the surface of the water from there, but they have yet to reach halfway, uh, which is really nice. Uh, so I decided to put another smaller one in there, right there, in the middle of all the uh, micro sword. Uh, so it's a nice little sword valley back there. I've got what three or four plants in there, uh, three or four swords, uh, and they're all doing really well. Not sure if they're ever gonna send up a flower stalk, but I've got enough of those with my immersed swords to uh, hold me up for a while. Yeah. It's my aquascape. If you guys have any suggestions for uh, what other fish I should put in here, aside for this test dummy right here, uh, leave it in the comments or private message me. Uh, I've still got maybe a month, month and a half before I start putting fish in here, just because I want to make sure all the plants are nice and settled. Uh, fish and uh, assassin snails uh, get in here later. And once the uh, hydrocotyls filled in that area, uh, mostly I'll start putting fish in. Uh, but right now, uh, as a schooling fish, I'm pretty convinced on micro rasboras and rasboras. Uh, don't get me wrong, I like tetras a lot, but they just don't get as small as I really want these guys. Uh, so as a schooling fish, I want them to be smaller than one and a half inches, just to give a, a nice perspective. Uh, illusion to make the tank look bigger. Uh, for bottom dwellers, I'm doing a, uh, a dwarf quarry cat, so that's either Corydoras uh, pygmius or Corydoras hasbroas. Uh, both very small, leaning towards hasbroas. Uh, pygmies kind of act like tetras, which is weird <laughs> for a quarry, but whatever. Uh, small quarry, maybe even. Uh, Corridors, Trilinius, uh, the other bottom dwellers I'm thinking of are Dario Dario, uh, which you don't know, you may not know, but it's a really nice uh, perch fish, stays really small, no bigger than an inch, like 1.2 inches or something like that, uh, but I might just put some more cockatoides in here, you never know. Alright, the Aquatic Master signing off.